Okay, so um, uh, I'm Eliot Tabalski. I'm a researcher here. My background is uh, international security and uh, the future of warfare, so to speak, put it broadly, the intersection between technology and security. And I want to uh, come back to the, uh, let's say, the strategic aspect of influence operations for which uh, fake news is one of the uh, common terms. The influence operations, we uh, presume that the adversary tries to influence uh, decision makers' opinions or public opinion. I want to challenge two things. A, uh, does it, what damage does it does? And B, how is the damage being done? So when we're talking about weaponization of information, okay, this brings us back to assessing uh, weaponry, right? We usually, when we think about weapons, we have a pretty good idea how it works, uh, where it can be used, what happens on impact, and so on. And uh, we sometimes hear weaponization of, of information more recently, and uh, very often recently, and uh, do we know how it works? So I try to think about it, and I think we have a pretty uh, straightforward model of how it works. Okay, someone weaponizes information, then uh, launches it and delivers to the uh, public, be it general public, targeted groups, decision makers, and so on. This information, when people uh, process this information, they change their perception, and some of the people take action. Okay, it's, it's, so I think this is pretty much sums up what we in the Western perception think about influence operations, where this action is the, uh, the point, the goal of the operations that uh, the adversaries conduct. So we can uh, see that at least in the United States, people measure uh, in numbers all sorts of uh, uh, things related to the aspects of such uh, uh, operations. You can measure the input. On the other hand, of course, the outputs are uh, really easy to measure. <laughs> We can see all sorts of phenomena happen that we cannot, uh, uh, we, we didn't accept or we didn't expect. And then we infer that there's some sort of relation between the two, which is also, which uh, pretty much uh, makes sense. Do we know all the details? No. But we can see the results in elections. We can see results in the erosion of trust in uh, uh, institutions of the democratic society. By the way, the erosion of trust is not uh, very new for everyone who did uh, political science. We know that trust of institu in institutions in uh, the Western world has been low and steadily declining for several decades now. But uh, we can see that uh, in this survey, uh, trust in media not only fell to all-time low in 17 countries, it dropped by five percentage points in the US. On the other hand, in China and Indonesia, <coughs> it seems uh, pretty uh, decent. I mean, people somehow do trust the media here. So that's an uh, interesting uh, finding anyway. And uh, another output, another result that we see is, uh, I suppose, we start to understand what they're looking for. It's difficult to evade Russia in this discussion. I tried to conceive the event differently, but we come back to the Russian examples because they're very pretty good case study. So it makes headlines. It's uh, uh, bigger headlines than the uh, uh, situation in Halep at the time. New York Times, uh, The Perfect Weapon is now the title of the book, but it was the title of the article by the authors, uh, Powerful Russian Weapon, and so on. So uh, there, there is one question, how do you measure the impact? This question is still uh, pretty much uh, uh, out there. I don't know how to measure it. It's pretty much uh, uh, it's a complicated issue. But I want now to move to the second uh, thing. We. Uh, if we accept this model, this perception, then we react. We see there's some adversarial action against uh, the Western society. We then think we understand it, and we turn, turn to react. We understand what they want. OK, it's pretty clear from what they say. We understand how they operate. We'll go back to the source. We'll find those who uh, uh, spread uh, this uh, disinformation. We'll find those channels through which uh, fake uh, news uh, proliferate. We'll go to the uh, uh, platforms, to the Facebook and Google, and ask them to make it less uh, uh, easy to manipulate these platforms and so on. And uh, we are at this stage in the Western debate. Uh, I want to challenge this assumption that it's helping, okay? 
going back to the Russian theories, they have a pretty peculiar extension to the cybernetic theory uh, done by a couple of people, especially a professor who then, since 1974, is the United States. Uh, this is a reflexive control theory. It's a too much mathematics, it's somehow in the same area of game, of game theory. Uh, the issue is that uh, it is caught up pretty strongly uh, and extended to information warfare. So basically the theory says like this, uh, systems, including social systems or social technical systems, they have a certain, so to speak, algorithm how they operate. Once you figure out how the system operates, then you can feed input that causes it to behave in the way you as the adversary want, but the system itself thinks that it behaves rationally, that it does the right thing, that it does the natural thing, that it does the thing that it should do, to, that aligns with its interests. Now, this is not a necessarily a positivist approach to science, because when you start to read these things, there's a lot of caveats, but they certainly believe in this area. And since the 90s, it has spread out to the area of information warfare. There are literally dozens of books. Some are more scientific, including academic institutes. Some are more popular uh, press that uh, describe uh, uh, a lot of events, such as the democratization and the fall of the Soviet Union, the color revolutions, and so on, as a result of deliberate Western uh, new way of waging war in overthrowing regimes without reaching a threshold of violence and war. This is how they counter, this is how they operate, they meaning the West. And this reflexive control theory is uh, uh, featured in most of these uh, perceptions. So uh, it's better to understand how they think if you want to understand uh, how to protect against what we, uh, how, how to defend against these things. In this theory, a reaction the system's reaction is actually the goal of the operation in the first place. The input is tailored to the targets. It depends a lot on understanding how the targets work. And in this sense, it's, uh, there's no doubt that the freedom of uh, press and speech in, in the West and the platforms help a lot in targeting and micro-targeting and further targeting the messages to the audiences. The action that uh, people take after they uh, receive the input is rational. It doesn't depend on some sort of deliberation or uh, cognitive process. They view it almost as a mechanistic uh, system. And then uh, those who uh, uh, see the action and they take reaction, this for them it's also a uh, warranted and just reaction. So in fact, the damage is on the other direction. The damage is when the reaction goes against uh, uh, the uh, sources, so to speak, of, inf of uh, information, disinformation, influence operations. Now, if this is correct, then we have a big problem, because many of the reactions that are being conceived are, in fact, what they want to achieve. The message uh, from the uh, Russian uh, messaging is pretty clear. Democracy is not real democracy. This is a, democracy is a fake regime, it's a failing regime, and we have a better alternative. Every time we consider things like government regulating, filtering out, telling out what's correct and what not, we're actually playing to their hands. Therefore, it's uh, better to start uh, learning what, how they perceive things, how they learn uh, things, and uh, challenge our own assumptions on the damage of these operations. Thank you. Okay, now we move to a panel discussion, and I want to introduce our uh, moderator, Barbara Carfagna. She's an Italian journalist working an anchor woman, anchor woman for ITV, Italian public television. She's an influencer in cyber and realized reportages, in-depth reportages in countries such as the Gulf States, Singapore, Taiwan, Israel, Japan, and so on. Please.